Welcome back everybody. If you're new, my name's Nicholas and this is Investing Against the Grain. I talk a lot about corruption when it comes to this reconciliation bill, the EV tax credit, and we're going to talk a little bit more about it. I'm going to put some color around it and just more examples of this corruption. Now, with that said, there is one small glimmer of hope where one man may be able to come in and stop all of this corruption, at least when it comes to this EV tax credit with regards to unions. Believe it or not, that one hope is not Elon Musk for once. Normally it is, this time it's not. So we're gonna take a look at that and uncover who that one person is. We also have a teaser video that I believe came from Tesla. And together, we're gonna unpack and speculate on what this could mean. Is it a new product? Is it a new factory? Is it a new something that we can't even think about right now? We can't even fathom. So stick to the end because that's going to be exciting. But before we just dive into any of this material, do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring that bell, and let's get into it. So as most of you are aware by now, we are going through this reconciliation process with uh, the White House, with, the Cong with Congress, the House, and the Senate. All right, the, the, this reconciliation bill is a bigger, it's the Build Back Better plan from President Biden, and the infrastructure bill has already been passed. Now, the infrastructure bill had nothing to do with the EV tax credits. The infrastructure bill had things like supercharging networks and things of that built in, but the individual EV tax credit is part of the reconciliation bill. Part of that had different tranches for electric vehicle car makers and incentives for them to build electric vehicles. And one of them was a $4,500 credit for any automaker who builds a vehicle in the United States and uses union labor. Now, this is a big conflict of interest for a lot of people, for a lot of auto, auto manufacturers, namely Tesla, because Tesla does not use any union workers. Tesla pays their employees appropriately. They pay them more than union workers get paid. They have better benefits, they get stock options, right? It's, it's a place where people really want to work. However, the government, the White House, is really pushing for this UAW, the United Auto Workers, to be part of this entire picture, that, uh, that auto manufacturers have to use them or they miss out on this $4,500 uh, tax incentive. The problem with this is that it's really pandering towards a certain um, we're, you know, ideology of unions versus non-unions. And there's blatant corruption in this because we know that UAW essentially has made Biden's career. Biden has said that himself, that, you know, the UAW is what got him where he is today. And they've contributed a lot, massive, massive amounts of money to his campaigns over the years. The whole idea that these union workers or these uh, auto manufacturers who leverage union workers will get this credit, yet everyone else won't, is a very you know, we're going to pick winners and losers mentality. $4,500 per vehicle of an extra tax credit is a massive amount of money to be given out. And that's tax dollars. Okay. That's, that's money that comes from all of us. Now, my personal opinion, I really don't think we need any tax credits at all. If we look anywhere, EV sales are through the roof. Okay. There's more demand for electric vehicles than we've ever seen. I, I honestly don't think we need any incentives at this point. However, if you're going to give incentives, make it fair, okay? In other words, keep it a level playing field. Don't force companies to select who they hire as employees. Like, th there's something wrong with that, okay? That's government trying to influence what private companies do. You either give an incentive to people who buy electric vehicles, which should be going back to us, the people, all right? It should be company agnostic, okay? I don't care what Tesla does. I don't care what Toyota does. I don't care about Ford or GM. The tax credit should be benefiting me. It should not be benefiting these companies themselves. Okay, so if I go to buy a, a EV, I should reap the benefit. Okay, those are my tax dollars. Those are your tax dollars. We should be getting the benefit. And for the government to say, no, we're only going to make it for um, companies who use uh, union labor, there's a problem with that. So with all that said, I want to show you a tweet about a current probe that's going on with the UAW, the United Auto Workers Union, which is the union that you see Ford, GM, Stellantis, essentially all of the you know OEMs use to build their vehicles. So here we can see just a headline. Okay, I'm not going to go too deep into this article just because you know there's enough stuff out there. People have covered this enough, but just look at these headlines. 
Feds charged the 16th person in the UAW, United Auto Workers, corruption probe following internal union audits. Now, keep in mind, a, you know, charging someone doesn't actually mean they're guilty. But the fact that this probe is even going on is ridiculous. You know, and you can see down here that they're alleging that he stole $2 million. Th this is the problem, okay? It's, this isn't the first time. This won't be the last time. The UAW has a history of having these issues. And it's not just the UAW. I don't want to pick on them. I've worked for two unions, okay? One of them had to, we, everyone on the board got fired, right? The entire leadership got let go. There were corruption charges against them because the entire pension for the union became um, non-solvent, okay? So there's an issue there. And then another union I worked for is currently going through the same process again, where there's more corruption. There's more people stealing from the top. I don't know how this happens, Okay, I, I'm not that smart. I'm not paid to be in those levels and I'm not part of a union now. But when I was part of a union, it was very blatant that there's a just built in corruption into the entire system. And here we can see with the U United Auto Workers, which I've never been part of. It's clearly the same thing, right? We can see it here night and day. And it's not like this is the first time this has ever happened with the UAW. This seems to be a consistent thing. So with that said, What's happening? Okay, what can we do to stop it? Well, the truth is, besides you reaching out to your your local officials, your representatives, there's nothing we can really do. At this point, we have to hope that there's somebody out there who will stand up for what's right, and this is not right. Somebody who will stand up for keeping things fair and not picking winners or losers. And we actually have that person. Let's take a look. Here we can see a article that says, Mansion objects to tax credit for union made EVs and spending package. So I went ahead and clicked on this. I highlighted some interesting parts of the article. Let's take a look at that now. So the article says, Senator Joe Manchin expressed opposition to a provision in Democrats' climate and social spending bill that would give additional tax credits for union built electric vehicles. A version of the legislation released by the House would provide customers a $7,500 tax credit for new electric vehicles now to keep keep this in perspective this is just flat out across the board everybody would get 7500 for us made vehicles with an additional 4500 credit if the vehicle is made in the us by union workers so on top of that 7500 if you use union labor you get another 4500 dollars okay that's an insane incentive to begin with this is why i really don't think we need this ev demand is through the roof but think about this. If you were to buy a, a um, hybrid vehicle, in other words, it's somewhat internal combustion engine, has a small, small battery where you can get maybe 20 miles of range, right? So essentially you have these two different drivetrains. It's not a real electric vehicle, but it's made in the US. It's a hybrid, right? So it's not an actual electric vehicle you would actually get a bigger tax credit than a company like Tesla. Like, how does that make any sense? If the whole incentive is to push and incentivize people to get electric vehicles, how can it be that a internal combustion engine gets more tax credit than a company like Tesla? That makes zero sense. Going on here. Um, so Manchin, Senator Manchin, objected to the $4,500 credit for union built vehicles quote when i heard about this what they were putting in the bill i went right to the sponsor senator debbie stabino 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 i don't know how to say that um and i said this is wrong this can't happen it's not who we are as a country it's not how we built this country and the product should speak for itself Manchin told Automotive News during a Toyota event in his home state. I'm going to scroll down here. Quote, we shouldn't use everyone's tax dollars to pick winners and losers. If you're a capitalist economy that we are in society, then you let the product speak for itself. And hopefully we'll get that. That'll be corrected, he added. Democrats can't afford to lose a single vote on their legislations because of the 50-50 split in the Senate. So they need to win Manchin's support. Automakers with non-union workforces like Honda, Toyota, and Tesla have criticized the additional credits as unfair. Meanwhile, 
the United Auto Workers Union has praised it as a supportive of a good working conditions. So, of course, the UAW is all for this, right? The same one that's going through this current probe for corruption with over 16 people being charged, right? They're all for this, of course. And this is something else that just irks me. I don't know why. We always see this. Good working conditions, all right? It, good working conditions. This is all that unions ever say. That's all that anyone ever talks about. Joe Biden preaches it left and right. You know, oh, we need good working conditions. We need good working conditions. Whoever said that a company like Tesla doesn't have good working conditions? If you want good working conditions, go look at what Tesla does and tell the UAW to start encouraging that. And even more so, if companies aren't providing good working conditions, shouldn't we really be rebuking the companies themselves? Like, what does that say? So for GM Stellantis, they need to have unions to have good working conditions. So what does that say about those companies? Like, why don't we push back on that? Why don't we rebuke those companies? Because clearly... What we are being told is that if it wasn't for a union, Ford, GM, and Stellantis would not be providing good working conditions. So what does that say about them compared to a company like Tesla or Toyota or Honda? It's something to think about, right? This is 2021. I've said this a million times. I've been part of unions. I get why unions were important at one time in history, but that time is no longer here. We are past that. Unions are no longer necessary, right? At this point, we have social media, we have different outlets, we can make noise, people's voices matter. And companies care more about their employees than they do about anything else at this point, okay? Attracting good talent is the primary objective of most companies at this point. So the whole idea of unions and this, just, this whole idea here is very reminiscent of somebody like Joe Biden, someone who's just of this geriatric mindset of how things were back in the 80s and 70s. You know, it's time we wake up, right? We're 50 years removed from that. Things are a lot different, right? We, we need to modernize what we're doing here with unions. I want to transition over into talking a little bit about FSD 10.4, um, and then I want to go into the teaser video. So let's just go ahead and move on to 10.4 real quick. Now, for those of you who have followed me for a while, You've, you know that whenever Tesla has a new release of FSD beta, I tend to spend my time get, you know, I watch hours and hours and hours of all of the releases from all of the beta testers. And I try to compile all of the most interesting parts of those, right? The good, the bad, the ugly, so that we can see what is really happening and where the technology really is at. Now, for the last few uh, versions, I haven't done it. Um, honestly, I haven't seen massive improvements in in it you know it's a very incremental you know nothing that just like blows your mind away that you can tell the drastic differences and you can hear that with a lot of the the beta testers however with 10.4 i haven't had a chance to make a video but i highly recommend you go guys go watch a lot of these videos here chuck cook for those of you who have again seen my videos chuck cook has had this unprotected left hand turn uh, in jacksonville florida uh, a lot of the roads in florida they're unprotected left-hand turns, and what most people do is they hang out in the median, all right? And they hang out in the median until the other side is clear. Tesla does not do that, right? FSD does not do that yet. And so with 10.4, it's the first time we start to see where the Tesla is confidently and very accurately not waiting in the median, but it's making these unprotected left-hand turns. It's being patient. It's waiting to both sides are clear, and then it's making its turn. I think this is a huge step in the right direction. We still need to get you know certain things like hanging out in the median, right? It needs to be able to do that. We need to get U-turns, right? It's, Tesla doesn't do U-turns right now, and I'm pretty sure U-turns it can do it. It's just a matter of that they haven't you know opened that up yet for FSD. I, I highly recommend you come check out Chuck Cook. He's got great content, great material, and you know, he's got, you can see here on the bottom left, this is a drone video where you can see what he's doing. This is um, from the, the driver's point of view. This is the FSD screen. And over here, we can see the drone view. So that's his car right here, the, the white vehicle. And you can see what's happening with the traffic. So it's a very good layout that he has, and it gives you a good understanding of where things are with 10.4. My last comment with 10.4 is also take a look at um, Hyperchange Golly. Golly is based out of Seattle. He does the monorail test again, and three out of three times, it does the monorail test smoothly. 
Okay, this is a huge improvement. If you guys remember from uh, nine uh, beta uh, nine point zero release, it could not handle the monorail test. It it would kind of do it, but it'd be very sketchy, too sketchy for Golly to actually trust it to do it. Now it's it's almost like butter. Okay, it can still get better, but it's 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 getting there real close. In fact, Golly even said on it, you know, it was almost a perfect. Um, it was almost a perfect no no disengagement drive and. You'll have to go watch and see, you know, why it was almost perfect. His only critique was, and if there was one, he said, would be that it's maybe a little too cautious, but with this type of technology, that's a good critique. Like this is full self-driving beta that's out there in the wild. That's going to be used for people who don't have to pay attention to driving, who can have robo taxis. Again, it's not there yet. It's not there yet. It's beta. But if that's your biggest criticism, that it's too cautious, it's too safe, well, then I think we're going down the right path. All right. With all that said, we've talked about FSD. We've talked about that corruption. We've talked about, hopefully, the glimmer of hope, which is Joe Manchin. Hopefully, he makes sure that, you know, the, the UAW extra tax credit is removed from the reconciliation bill. They need him. They can't do it without him. So hopefully that happens. But now I want to talk about this teaser video. And before I start talking about it, let's just watch it real quick. So this leaked video came from Sawyer Merritt, which you can see here. And I just want to go over some of the speculation. All right. So I, I don't know what you guys think, what you were thinking when you saw this. So, you know, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think this was about. But I haven't heard many people talk about it. So I, I figured, you know, someone's got to. So I figured I would. Um, so I want to scroll down here. here. Here was Sawyer's comments. Four, comma, an outline of a vehicle, comma, XO. That's all I'm allowed to share right now. Once I get the go ahead, then I'll share more. Who doesn't like a little fun teaser? People get so upset when they don't understand something, laugh out loud. Don't take it too seriously, y'all. Scroll down here and somebody comments, crazy that nobody in thread has got it yet. Sawyer responds, I think I made it too hard, but I can't fully share the news yet. So I have to be really cryptic. What's in the video is okay to share though. Now, to be fair, I don't know if this is specifically Tesla related. I'm pretty sure it is. Like I'm 99% confident it is, but we'll see. Um, so I'm going to scroll down here. Um, he says it's not stock related. So the whole you know idea of four for one split, it's not that. I'm going to scroll down here. Uh, it says, oh, okay, so here he does say, nope, it's Tesla related. When do we find out what this is? He says 2022. So 2022 will know what this is, which makes me, you know, when I first heard that, it made me think that it was related to um, the $25,000 vehicle. So th that's my initial instincts. And then he said, I don't know, but it'll be four comma 680 X cooler than what Ford will produce. So that 4680 battery, that's what he's talking about here. Um, I thought it was the stranger thing for trailer. That was funny. Uh, all right, so here's some th something interesting. So here, the bouncing light was a continuous line. Is this something? And you can see here the outline of it. So what does that look like to you? To me, when I was looking at that, honestly, when I first saw it, I, it made me think of the Roadster is what it looked like to me. But maybe it's not. Maybe it's something else. The Roadster could make sense, though, because if Giga Austin is completed and the Roadster is built in Giga Austin... 2022 is when we'll actually know what this is so that could be a good timing but what would the four be well keep in mind okay so I'm, I'm honestly thinking about this live this is a thought i had before keep in mind that elon on a episode with joe rogan said that those who have waited for the roadster will not be disappointed because it's going to come with the spacex package now if this is the roadster and it had four thrusters in the back Okay, four thrusters and keep in mind we had the whole um you know looking up into the sky into space right 
I mean, looking up into the stars, right? It could be the SpaceX package for the Roadster. That could make sense. Is this supposed to be something you can see someone else did here? The outline. Um, Model 2 is not a car. Model 4 is the successor of the 3, obviously. So maybe that's it. Uh, people make comments here about um, why it wouldn't be something done in China. Uh, because number four is something that you know doesn't it doesn't have good meanings in in China. I think XO refers to Hong Kong, so something is announced in Hong Kong event. My guess: twenty five thousand car that uses forty six eighty and comes from Giga Shanghai. There are lots of new buildings that are almost finished that m that many don't even know. So that's a that's an interesting one there. I'll play my guess. My guess. Okay, so XO is the extreme off-road Cybertruck or Cyber Quad hardware for Elon previously mentioned that this would be introduced with Cybertruck. Four is just the first number for 4680, hinting 4680 will be used in cars next year. Okay, so those are pretty good. Um, I, I I can find issues with all of these though. Why? I, I mean, why would you have the XO if it's for the 4680? That wouldn't make too much sense though. I say cyber quad. I okay, so I, I like the idea of the cyber quad, but the only thing is when we saw that outline, it def it's definitely an outline of a vehicle and it looks nothing like the cyber quad. <laughs> I, I like this comment. I'm way too dumb to figure this out, but cool video with music and cinematics, laugh out loud. Hugs and kisses given by Tesla as it drives away from the entire population of the world, including OEM CEOs. That 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 made me giggle. So South Korea, okay, I can see that. <laughs> Dude, I don't understand. Um, let's see. <laughs> it's the drone. The backdrop is the stars. It's clearly in the sky because of the trees in the lower right. Could be a larger drone for deliveries, a small, eh, I don't think it's a drone. Let's see. Let's see if there's any other good guesses here. So fourth factory. Okay. So this, I do like, I do like the idea of this. Okay. So the Ford could be the fourth factory. Now I know some of you might be thinking, well, Tesla has more than four factories. Well, I think the way Elon thinks about it is the release cycle. So you had the Fremont factory was one and then the Giga Shanghai factory was two. Now Berlin and Austin are being opened up at the same time. So I think that's number three. So this would be the fourth evolution of another factory. So that's what would be four. So that could be representative of that four. So I do like the idea of that being the four. And then the vehicle outline could be the new 25,000 model vehicle. That could be something. Um, but, and oh, and down here we see like 99%, this is model two related, but either way, excited. Okay, so with that said, we're, we're gonna stop guessing on these. Uh, I My main, if I had to, you know, put my guesses out there, I would say it's either something with the Roadster and SpaceX package, or I would say it has to do something with the 25,000 vehicle and what I've said in previous videos where I think they're going to make four different versions of it. So one that is more pertinent towards the China market, one that's more pertinent towards the European market, one for say India or Japan, and then one for the US. So that's something I could see is that they, you know, they have four different iterations of this vehicle. You're either it's a hatchback, a, a cr more crossover, more of a sedan, right? Whatever resonates with those areas. And that's going to be what comes out. So that's, those are my guesses. Do me a favor, <laughs> comment below. Let me know what you think this is. Let me know. I don't care how wild it is. Just let me know. It's, you know, for all we know, you might be right. But we're going to leave it there for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this teaser, you know, kind of got you excited. Do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring that bell. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Please be safe out there. And I'll see you all on Monday. Peace.